Welcome to the Lara Jane Layton Show. This podcast is for you, the person who keeps putting others first. Your self-talk has held you back. You no longer need to take a second seat. Let's explore ways to overcome self-doubt. You can silence that inner bully voice and achieve your full potential. Here's your host, Lara Jane. Hello, friend. I am so excited to have my new best friend with me today. Nicole is here. And what is so exciting about the topic we're going to talk about today is that feeling of having a purpose. Do you feel like you're running through life? Go, go, go. And you've never really stepped back and go, why am I even here? What am I doing? What is this even fulfilling me? And guess what? You do have a purpose. And it could be doing exactly what you're doing. It could be making a switch. It could be switching just a little bit. There's so much. But until you know what that next purpose is, oh, and guess what? Your purpose can change. You can have a purpose for this 10 years and another purpose for the next. It's okay to change. But once you dial in that purpose, let's figure out how to find what we want to do and what's going to fulfill us right now. Where can we help with those personal values? So Nicole is here to join us. Her information's in the show notes. It's right there. You can go down right now, click on anything, how to get a hold of her, see more about her and what she's done. But let's get started and let's turn the time over to Nicole and go, Nicole, help my friend and I find our purpose in life. Oh, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on this uh, topic of purpose. I actually love Oprah Winfrey shares this quote. She says, if you don't know your life's purpose, then your sole purpose is to figure it out. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it kind of goes along with what you just shared was, right? It's it can become hard to get up in the morning sometimes when you're just running on the hamster wheel, repeating like Groundhog Day, day after day after day, without knowing who you are and why you're here and what your purpose is. That sense of purpose can literally provide you with fulfillment. And our friends <laughs> that can provide, right? That's a fulfillment every single day. So I do have a few ways that I look at purpose that I've studied it and that I hope will help today. And I'm happy to kind of dig into that. I, I like it. You know, and I went for years thinking my only purpose was to raise kids and put a roof over their heads and make sure they had clothes, clean clothes to wear to school. And it's okay if that's where you're at right now. But I bet you there's a purpose that's going to be a little bit more fulfilling that involves some self-love and some self-care and some self-grace. Give yourself some grace. So mm -hmm. Nicole, jump right in and help us discover this new Absolutely. purpose. Um, and you know what? I just felt inspired as well. At some point, I'll share with you what my purpose statement is so that you can kind of hear an example of what it is that the way that I, I look at it. And there's many ways. This is my version of it you know, take what works and let go of what doesn't. Hey, I have one too. So when you share, I'll share mine. Cool. Amazing. How exciting. So the three pillars that really are impactful to look at when you're trying to identify your purpose are your first, your desires. And that could be, you know, travel or it could be time with family. It could be making an impact on others in some capacity. So what your desires are, the second is what your values are. And that's like, that's a thing that a lot of times is missed because we kind of can get to a point where we're focusing on a goal or a vision or a, or a, a, you know, a desire that we think this is where we're going, but we're not always focused on what are our values. Your values are a critical part of why you do what you do. And your values are going to win at the end of the day anyways. Your, your values will, you will sacrifice your goals for your values. So if you don't know what your values are, then you will unintentionally not hit your your other, other areas of life. Uh, and then the third one is your strengths. And that's what are you really good at? 
What do you, what do you have your innate talents or skills or even just characteristics? Are you innately a good listener or are you really a good speaker? Like, you know, what is something that annoys other people about you? That might be a strength of yours. And how can you intentionally put those three pillars together? I'm happy to break them down a little further if we have some time. Um, But putting those three pillars together and merging them together to really help find your purpose. (laughs) I, I like this and my head's just like going spinning. Like I could talk so much about all of these, but let's stop. Let's start with pillar number one. So how do I find my desires? That is going to be a bit of a unique journey for each person. And to be honest, a lot of us have the idea of dreaming has kind of been knocked out of us after childhood. Mike, right? You were talking about kind of getting into the the rabbit hole or repeating day after day, or we've got all the, we've got the list of tasks that we've got to get done. So we don't really tap into that imagination, the dreaming part, because we're so stuck on the tasks of, of just getting through each day, one day at a time. So um, one of the ways that I actually find very helpful for kind of tapping into your desires is first of all, taking some breaths, stepping outside, maybe going in nature, like putting yourself in a space where you can even dream. If you just are trying to think of what do I want, but you're in the middle of two tasks and you're giving yourself 30 seconds to think of what you want, it's going to be hard to come up with what some of those desires are. Well, sometimes it's hard enough just to come up with what I want for dinner, let alone (laughs) my desires that are long lasting. So yeah, yeah, it's like, it's going to take some dedication on each person's part yeah. to take that time to reflect and decide that for sure it and it, it's it's and you mentioned you know self-care a little bit it's the willingness to give yourself a little bit of time to dream and to think what are things that are important to you when i say desires i'm referring to like what are things that are on your heart and you know it's what is on your heart right now because maybe in 10 years, you will have some different desires or 10 more years. But being willing to to step out of your life, even for 30 minutes or 60 minutes, go for a walk, get out of your environment because you're. it'll be very difficult to dream and really think of what your true desires are on your heart um, when you're in the, the routine of going one step at a time. Um, the other thing I would say is that there's different areas of life. So this can help when someone's trying to think of what are my desires? And it's just thinking of anything in all areas. You can narrow it down and say, what are your desires for your relationship? With relationships, rather. I didn't I meant to say relationships. You know, whether it's a romantic or with friends or with your coworkers. So you can bucket it and say, today, I'm going to reflect on what are my desires in my relationships? And then tomorrow or, or later on, say, what are my desires with how I spend my time? What are my desires with financial my financial status? What are my desires, maybe spiritually? What are my desires with my health? So breaking it down can allow you, instead of just trying to put your mind into all places at once, right? And I'm curious, even if you just, as I said that, you may have had some thoughts and say, oh yeah, now I can, like it helps you to narrow down a little bit where you might have some specific desires in one category of life or another. It it for sure did. And the things that I thought of were you know, I have desire for the health. I, I want my physical body to be able to move and not be stagnant on the couch. You know, I want my spiritual health to feel in tuned with the intuition. I want my family to feel listened to and cared about unconditionally, which Uh, with those words, I will share my purpose or my who, what I frame my whole life to be is Mm -hmm. I want, or I am, I don't even, I, I know it and I'm trying to reframe it for you. And that is stupid. Don't reframe (laughs) it for somebody else. I am here to allow you unconditional love, acceptance, and beauty to create what I call natural happiness. 
When you don't have to dig down, when you don't have to find an external source, when you don't have to find something else to be happy, you are now naturally happy. Mm. And you will bring that happiness to you everywhere you go. So that is my purpose, is to accept others through unconditional caring to create natural happiness. Wow. That's so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that with me as well. (laughs) I've never shared it with anybody on here. So you're the first. Oh my goodness. (laughs) I feel so honored. Thank you so much. That's so beautiful. And I, I love it. I love your purpose as well. It's similar in some ways, but the idea of unconditional, this is a little side note, but just the idea of unconditional love, right? Like to love yourself and to, to feel that you don't have to do certain things or achieve certain things or, you know, in order to be seen and be loved and, and find happiness, right? You can be, you can just be happy (laughs) before, or even, or with or without the external things that your mind might tell you should be in place before you can be happy. You can actually choose that. And it's, and (laughs) it's a process and, you know, not and it takes not programmed time. into us naturally, right? For the most part, except for when we're children, right? The children before that, you know, under before age, we program it out and, of them, yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. They just find natural happiness, persistence, unconditional love, forgiveness. <laughs> like the five-year-olds forgives you immediately. <laughs> they don't even remember yes. you did something that was that annoying. So, oh, know, so I purpose that inner to child be five kind of. again. <laughs> Our purpose is all to go back to our inner child. Well, there's aspects of being an adult that also serves us. Yeah. So that's so that was just kind of the desires aspect. Uh, what I have found is that when people are really reflecting on their desires, it is kind of a bit of like there's typically something much deeper than just the surface level desires. Your desires are kind of like what you want to be known for, what legacy you want to have. What are they? What are true? So when I when I talk about desires with your purpose, it's different than I want this new car. You may also want that, and that's fine. When it's in when it's reflecting your purpose, it's we're looking for kind of a bit deeper, broader things that, in my experience so far in doing this, the past well, we've been, I've been in this industry for eight years. It always involves other people. I don't want like to say always. <laughs> you know, I can't say for sure that it's always. In but so far in my experience, it really has been that you're. The, the purpose for your being on earth is not solely for your own self. It is, you are worthy of it being for yourself and, and loving yourself and on all those things in for yourself. And when you do truly have that self-love, even if that's what your purpose is, it will overflow and you will naturally influence others. So either way, it is always, it is always for yourself and, and others. So when, when thinking about desires in your life, kind of thinking about how does this influence or impact others. So now that we've taken the time to self-reflect, figure out even if it's one thing you can write down today that you desire, you can add to it later. You can take it off later. You can change your mind. I didn't really want that. I I bought a car one time and I bought it for 30 days and got rid of it because I didn't like it. I thought I was going to like it. So try it on. Give your desire a chance. If you don't like it, change it. It's okay. And so if we've gone now and we've gotten our desires, that next is our values. How do we do our values? Oh, yeah. Values is such a good topic. I love the topic of values. When I when you look at your values, I really like to look at these deep core values. Is, is the destination is to identify your true core values, like the deeper things, deep things on your heart. One way to look at what you're currently valuing, which may or may not be what you you're, you truly want to value, is look at how you're spending your time. Look at your calendar and look at your checkbook. Where you're spending your time and your money is what you are showing the world that you through your actions that you currently value. You spend majority of your time and money on things that you value, and you know this. It's it, this is an awareness in some cases. For folks, right? If they see, if they realize, oh my goodness, I'm spending all of my time at, at work, and and it doesn't, and and I should clarify, it doesn't need to be. Time isn't a measure of the of the 
weigh the impact of that time. One hour of focused, device-free time with your children can be way more impactful than three hours of distracted device time. So it's not the actual amount of time exclusively. It's the quality of that time that really reflects how what you value. But that's a, that's the test. One of the tests is where are you spending your time? Where are you spending your money? And that'll show you what you currently value. And that can be a way, a way of identifying, oh my goodness, there's a gap. There's a mm-hmm. gap in what I truly want to value versus what I'm showing the world that I value. And that awareness is the first step. Once you're aware of it, then you can choose to shift, you know, choose a different way, choose to change how you're spending that that time and money. Or you can just accept it and say, okay, I really value my health. And so I spend a lot of money at the gym and on organic products or whatever. And if, if that's okay with you, you don't have to feel guilt or shame around time and money on something if you've if you're aligned with it, right? If you know you value it and you're okay with it, there's an alignment there, it provides freedom <laughs> for people. Yeah. Well, and I know our friend has a busy, busy calendar. That's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. And, and I do and you do and it's life. There are people that don't have calendars. And as like our children, we're the ones driving what they do when. Mm-hmm. What it, Their values are that freedom. I get to choose and do what I want whenever it comes to me where I have a very structured um, I need to do these things on this day, these things, and they're both good. Mm-hmm. They're both okay. But when I have work on my calendar for 12 hours a day and my kids for two hours a day, you need to also say, why is the reason behind this thing on my calendar? My work schedule gives me money. My money gives me a home, a ability to do these things when I do have time with my kids. And so even though the calendar might say work, mm-hmm. what is the driving reason that you go to work? And there you get your deeper value. Yeah, for sure. And that is actually an important way for people to look at their time as well, because otherwise it, a lot of life can seem very imbalanced if you don't understand the underlying reason behind your actions. And there may be ways where, when someone looks at this or when our friend looks at this to say, Oh, maybe I could, maybe I could, if maybe I could turn my, put my device away during that two hours with my child, like, because I do value that. Like there may be ways to tweak things that, that could increase the experience of, of express expressing that value. There's something else that I want to share that I think is really impactful when you look at values it's referred to as social idealisms. At least that's what I refer to it as social idealisms. And that is when you think you value something because you were taught through your upbringing or your school or your church or your work, you were taught that you're supposed to value this, or this is the way things are supposed to be or should be or ought to be, right? If should, ought to, or have to come in, I know you like the power of words, come into your mind when you're thinking, oh, I, I have to clean my house because mom's coming over. You may choose to clean your house because mom's coming over. And that's okay if it's a choice and you're like, no, what? I do value this and I'm going to choose that. That's different. Social idealisms are when you are, when you have that nagging feeling of I should or I have to, and you haven't done the work to say, wait, do I really truly value this? Because before age seven, your subconscious mind is just wide open. So you just, you know, kids, the reason they believe in Santa and Tooth Fairy is because there's no filter. <laughs> they don't have that developed yet. So they just believe what they're taught. And it's like, as an adult, you now get the chance to say, wait, do I, do I value? Do I think I have to do these things in life in this order? I have, you know, you might choose to, and hopefully you're catching my, I don't want to say it's wrong to value those things. It's just, you get, now you get the chance to decide, do I value the same things my parents valued? Or do I just think I value them because they told me I should value them and therefore I value them. You might truly value them or you might value them less than they do. And then it's all okay. It's like, this is the exercise where do I think I should and where do I truly align with that, that value? You know, one of those social things that comes to my mind when you say this is the word pretty. Mm-hmm. When you're, oh, you're, you're 
five-year-old and you're just, oh, you look so pretty today. Your mom did your hair so cute. And, and we start valuing and judging our own bodies and looks based on some other pillar, some other person's definition of pretty. And you mm -hmm. think, oh, I have to be pretty to be liked. Oh, I have to be pretty. And it's the same with any other single word you want. There's a definition media plays in it. Who's to say that you are not the most beautiful person? It's not a competition. It's our souls that shine and share. And it's hard to not try to fit that social acceptable. And so, yes, how do you break through and know what your true measurement is and not what society has gotten us to? So that's a tricky one because mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you do, you have all these things that says, this is what's pretty. But if you look over the centuries, pretty's changed. Mm -hmm. There was a time when round women were the favored because that showed wealth. There was a time, you know, it's just like all these different things. It shows health. And now we have these, and I'm on a tangent and I will get off of it because I really want to hear about the strengths because that's important. But it's really tuning into who you are and choosing your own values and not letting society choose those for you. So before we get on to pillar number three, which is strengths, we're going to take a quick break from our sponsors. When we come back, we will talk about the pillar of strength. So we'll be right back. This podcast is sponsored by Lara Jane Coaching. You know you're ready to silence your inner bully voice. Let Lara Jane support you with coaching. To schedule an introduction call, go to larajanelayton.com. All right, friend, we are back with Nicole and now we're going to talk about pillar number three. How do we find our own personal strengths? Absolutely. Um, I love this experience of identifying your strengths. And I, and I love the, when I'm talking about purpose, it's, it is bringing in your desires and your values. Because what sometimes can happen along those lines of social idealisms that we were talking about right before the break Sometimes with strengths, a child can be told, you're really good at math. You know, as you're getting into high school or getting growing, you should go into something with banking or finance or numbers. And, and then we make decisions exclusively based on our strengths. And that's only one part of your purpose. So it's, I want to talk about strengths and want to not make sure we don't put too much pressure on leveraging your strengths as the only vehicle <laughs> for your life, because that might not be in alignment with your whole self. So with strengths, first of all, I like to look at character strengths. Just to ask yourself, what are some natural characteristics that you possess? Like, and, and it, you, sometimes you might think this is a weak, they are a weakness. So don't, because like some I've experienced this myself and with clients where empathy, as an example, or vulnerability, they're like, well, I was told growing up, especially a male, like it, it there's definitely stereotypes growing up of being too vulnerable or being weak or, you know, and then wait and then coming up, coming into this experience now, looking at purpose and identifying and saying, wait a minute, vulnerability is actually a strength. So you have to when you're looking at those characteristics about yourself, be willing to, to look at the things that you might think are a weakness and <laughs> say, wait, <laughs> this way, like talks too much. That was one I definitely, definitely got growing up. Man, she just talks so much. She's really lovely, but she just won't stop talking in class. And now I'm like, okay, how can I leverage that? That is right. It is a strength. Something that annoys other people about you is a <laughs> funny way to look at strengths. Um, I find I see a lot of detail. So I will, I have to, I have to hold my, hold my mouth because I'll notice things out of place or things. And it, I don't, I don't mean to have a judgment because usually it's not a judgment. Usually it's like, I just want to help you by pointing this thing out. And 
is not, that's not always the right thing. Some, right. That can offend some people or they can, like, they don't care about it. Right. They don't value that. But those are, that's another example for me is something that could annoy someone else about you. Something that you might know is a strength, but something that you might think is actually even a weakness could, you could take part of it. You don't have to take the whole thing. Perfectionism, right? Aspects of that is not going to, are not going to serve you. If you are always waiting for things to be perfect, you can't even start. So aspects of a perfectionist can be a weakness. And there's aspects of that that could be a strength. Maybe you can plan more effectively or be more organized. Um, so those are kind of characteristics. I don't know any thoughts on that aspect of strengths. I know I've been talking for so a minute. So do you have, no, you're great. That's what, we're here to listen to you. So <laughs> this is good. Do you have a tool or something? Because I have an idea of one if you don't. Yeah, um, I have, we use one. We, we don't, it's a, you may, may, maybe the same one that you have. There are different strength assessments. We often use uh, through a company called Gallup. It's not, this is not my company, but it, there is a company called Gallup and they use, it's called Strengths Finder. And it's like an assessment tool. Um, and there are same some others. One. I mean, pardon? You said same one. It's the same one? Oh, cool. <laughs> On the same page. Um, I have found it to be very accurate, it, like from what we've experienced. There are others, especially, you know, people who are in corporate. Sometimes companies ask their employees to do strengths assessment. There's a color coding one. There are, so some people have already done it. Like, and your strengths can potentially evolve. If so what I like thing. about the strength finder, and if you're, um, the book will be link, is linked in our show notes right now, it's called strength finder 2.0 and it has everything to link to where you can go take the test, but it gives, I've taken it maybe five times and I like years apart and I get pretty close to the same results. Mm -hmm. And when you were talking about strengths versus that, how it becomes a weakness. So here's one of mine. Mine is inclusive. So I do not like to leave anybody out. I cannot have a party for five people. It doesn't work in my brain. Everybody has to be invited. That can get like... I don't have room for everybody. Where do you draw the lines? And I have a hard time drawing that line of who to invite and who to not because I don't want anybody to feel left out. And so it's like, yes, I want everybody to shine and be happy. My other one is positivity mm -hmm. that comes up in every time. And it can annoy the crap out of people. It's like, can you never, like they'll be talking about I was one day I was at lunch with some coworkers and like, oh, she needs to dye her hair. Oh, she has funny shoes on. Oh, she has. I'm like, maybe she's just trying to match her natural color. Maybe her other clothes were at the, like, I don't, I'm not going to do this with you for a whole hour at lunch. And we're like, we sometimes just want to talk about what isn't right. <laughs> I'm like, I only want to talk about what is good. <laughs> so it can be as annoying, as crazy annoying to people. So, but yes, this thing has, I don't know, you might have taken it more, more recently than I have, but there's like 35, there's a hundred different things on the list. And it shows you how each of those show up in your life and how the balance of them. And I love it. Mm -hmm. So go take it, yes. click on the link, yeah. get the book, take the assessment, learn more about yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what? It, it, it is tricky for people to assess themselves oftentimes, especially if they think it's a weakness, it's hard for them to see a strength. So that test can be a vehicle for someone to step into an aspect of themselves where they maybe were hesitant before. And and uh, and it's funny, positivity is my number one. I've taken it twice. The last time was about a year and a half ago. And then I had taken it maybe three times before that. Positivity was on there, both of them. And, right, it can be. And you know what's interesting? It's like if someone's in a bad mood and they're down and it's figuring out how to be positive without being too positive, like how to, um, not, not without being too positive, 
But I think what I have found, and this is a, a little off tangent, but because per- positivity is in my as part of my purpose <laughs> statement is to be a sunshine is the word I use. Sometimes I might shine my light from a little farther back if they're just if if it's too blinding if I'm up close. I'm not dimming my light. I might just not blast it in their face. If just not letting ready the to cloud it. come in between us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I it's love figuring it. out that when it's figuring out what those strengths are and, and and who you really are and then never dimming your light whatever that is and it in not and knowing that not everyone's ready to receive it. Right? And so they may need to see it from a little farther away. It doesn't mean you'd let go of your family or important people in your life necessarily. You choose whatever you choose to do with that and there might be just uh times where you have to, you you can shift a little bit (laughs) how you show up or how you position it. Um, Awesome. Now that we've found our strengths. So now we know what our desires are, or at least what they are right now, they can change what our values are. And we know where our strengths are. How do we put that all together to discover our life's purpose? So this can be a process. I know we're doing this in a quick show. So if if our friend is listening and they're like, oh, this feels overwhelming, take your time. It doesn't always happen instantaneously. But discovering your life's purpose may be a lifelong journey, right? And if you do this exercise, you'll be a lot closer than you were yesterday. <laughs> so no pressure and and be willing to take some of these steps. So I actually like to break it down to one or two desires, one or two strengths, one or two um, values. Sorry, I said those out of order. But the to narrow it down. So you're not going to say my purpose right now is to fulfill 10 desires and all of my values and all of, you may do that, but your statement kind of this idea of the clarity and focus is if I'm make if I'm going to use my purpose as a driver for my decisions for when I say yes, or when I say no, or what actions I take, the focused version of that will be helpful. <laughs> right? Narrowing in and saying, these are my top two strengths right now. They may or may not be the top two on your strengths finder assessment. It's the top two that you feel most connected with right now. The top one or two values that you feel are most connected with right now. And the one or two desires um, that you feel most connected to, as well as like I shared earlier with desires, it's going to likely be something that overflows to others. Like a desire to maybe if you love speaking Maybe you want to host a podcast (laughs) and your strength is positivity and inclusion, right? Maybe you host a podcast that you love speaking while in a positive way, making sure all of your guests reflect that uh, strength. And, And I would say that's likely a value as well. So sometimes you will find values and overlap with either desires or strengths because it might be a value and a strength. It might be a value and a desire. And um, you can find ways to to pick those focuses and and uh, put, pull them into your life in any way. It doesn't have to be in exclusively in your career or exclusively in your family. The idea is that you can live that way every day. <laughs> well, and I love your point about picking one or two, work on that. You know, get, we do not have to change our whole life right now. It's like going shoe shopping. Hmm, I like those. Let's try them on. Let's wear them. Let's get them to, you know, where you want this in your life. Okay, now I can go back and get a pair for, I've got my work shoes on now. Mm -hmm. I need some activity shoes. Let's go figure that. We don't have one pair of shoes. We have lots. Let's pick that one desire and work on it. Or that one strength that you want to share across all your desires. Whatever order. But it takes three to stand it up, so it's good back all three of them no matter what you do yeah one layer i love that i really appreciate that there's a quote from dr wayne dyer he says be a person who is open to everything and attached to nothing and that's kind of the essence of what i'm hearing from you is this like allow yourself to not be attached (laughs) to it to it has to be this way or that way or i should or shouldn't right just being open and and unattached. You know, I grew up thinking lima beans were awful. Never tried them. <laughs> Somebody else told me they were awful. Didn't ever want them, anything to do with them. And become an adult. And I like lima beans. So 
we put somebody else's thoughts and opinions kind of in front of us and go, oh, I don't like that either. And we're not being, now that we're adults, we can make a choice. Yeah. We can choose yes. and we can make those changes. So be yeah. okay with shedding that thing that you were brought to not like. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I have so many examples. I'm going to just shut up because it's your show today. <laughs> oh, well, I appreciate that. That's a great example because it is. There's so many things that we just haven't given ourselves the chance to look at because like 93 to 97% of us as a human, each person like operates on our subconscious. We operate with all those programs, those beliefs, those self-images, those thoughts. It's all deep down in there. We're not consciously thinking, do I like lima beans or not lima beans? I just was programmed to think I don't. So that it, it's like not even a thought. It's just deep in there. And right. And so most of us have a ton of those deep things that are not even true. And if we actually just can take a, t a moment to bring it to the surface and look at it and say, well, now I, maybe, I, maybe I'll take a moment to look at this and to choose. I did want to wrap up just with the purpose with, with the concept of values. One of the things with values, one of the reasons why I really like to have your values looked at when you're thinking about your purpose is to bring them along for the ride. So you may have someone who finds out that they have a big desire for, you know, to do this thing and make a big impact. And they're really good at, at this skill. Maybe, maybe it's even an author and they like, they, but they, if they don't intentionally say, well, I also value my family and my health. If we don't bring it along for the ride, they could get sacrificed. So your values are kind of like, what are the non-negotiables? Like, I'm going to go after this desire, leverage my strengths, and I'm not going to do it to the point where I lose my values, right? So sometimes it's your, your values are part of the whole package. Sometimes you're just wanting to make sure you don't sacrifice your values on the way to. So that's why it's all included in there is to make sure that you don't get so motivated to, you know, achieve something and, and then discover later that you regret it. And there's many ways to fulfill your values. So it, even that is meant there's even, you can bring your kids to your show. Like you don't have to, there's so many ways to fulfill the values. If family is one, as an example, because usually if we think, no, I'm supposed to have dinner at 5 PM every day with my family or 6 PM, that's probably a social idealism. You may want that, but you also may find, you know what? I could do that three days a week. And then the other two days I can go to the gym because I value my health also. And I'm trying to reach that other goal. There's so many ways to work with these things. It just takes intention. <laughs> it does. It takes setting the intention and making it happen, mm -hmm. letting it happen. I can set an intention to go outside and get some vitamin D from the sunshine and then later choose not to walk outside. Well, how? How do I, if I don't get up and make it happen, that's, oh, I'm not going to say it will never happen because the roof <laughs> could blow off, <laughs> but it's very rare that you're going to be in your home and getting your outdoor time. And that's, that's a value I want to set. It's not a value I expect anybody else to set, but it's coming up with those practical, how can I make this happen? How can I? encourage that to happen. If I want to spend more time with friends and I never reach out to them, ma, I'm not going to spend more time with them. Mm -hmm. So it, it's setting the motion. So I love it, Nicole. As yeah. we wind down, are there some last minute thoughts or a little bit more about yourself that you would like to share with our listener to close this session out? Absolutely. I think this is a great opportunity to share my purpose statement. <laughs> I want to hear it. My purpose, the sunshine that radiates from my heart is an influence for good to all those around to feel free and at peace. I live to wake up the world to a powerful, loving, inspired and healthy life by modeling that example for others to follow. As I free myself, I'm able to free the world. So it's a little bit long, but that's that totally so embodies powerful. who I am. <laughs> I love that I free myself. I free the world. 
So much time is spent trying to free the world while we're still caged mm-hmm. and we're not letting ourselves out. Absolutely. Take the time to let yourself out. Yeah. When you free yourself, you will be able to free others. Oh, awesome. I love it. Yeah. That, so this has been really powerful. I'm so grateful for this time. Thank you so much for having me, Laura Jane. And as you said, they can reach out if anyone wants to learn more or have questions. The information's in And if the- nothing else, re- take the test. I, I don't think I've brought this up on any other podcast. So take the test. It's fun. It's great. And even if you don't agree with the results, let it sit in. You're going to find them. You're going to see where it aligns. Thank you, Nicole, for joining us. Uh, We have totally enjoyed having you here. So friend, Nicole and I are not medical or mental licensed professionals. We are here for entertainment, a little bit of education, things that we've learned along the way to help you lighten your load on your journey. So stay tuned for the next episode. Are you tired of waking up exhausted? You are not alone. If you're looking to take your life back, let's start with the simple step of adjusting your self-talk. Stay tuned for the next episode with your host, Laura Jane. Remember to follow the show so you don't miss a next simple step that you can use to feel more confident. And please leave an honest review.